Through a Scottish Prism, the programme that is unapologetically pro-Scottish independence and anti-Westminster rule. Everything we say here is viewed through a Scottish Prism. Brought to you by Barhead Boy. Hi folks and welcome back to Through a Scottish Prism. It's not been a week, it's only been a few days since we last spoke, but of course today was a very, very special day, an exceptional day. I rode in an elephant, so exceptional. Um, but the resignation of the First Minister, it was only right that we have a special show and discuss that and the matters arising from that and the matters we think will arise from that. And I'm joined by my three dear friends uh, from Com- in Clickmanager. I hear them in Thailand. Uh, in Clickmanager is our Eva. Eva, my friend, how are you? Uh, doing well, Roddy, thank you, despite that surprise announcement, which took us all uh, by surprise. But you'll see I've got the Alba spokesperson, Mr Salmond, here to give us some sage advice tonight following his very dignified statement earlier today. Uh, yes, and I will be referring to that very shortly, Eva. Um, and also down there in Jedburgh, we have uh, uh, our favourite doctor, Dr Yvonne Ridley. Dr Yvonne Ridley, how are we? Oh, absolutely off the scale. Um, still can't quite believe what's happened. I mean, just two weeks mm. ago, uh, the First Minister was telling us, I've got plenty left in the tank. And that was, of course, when the New Zealand Prime Minister said she was stepping down because she'd had oh. enough. So then people started saying to Nicola Sturgeon, are you going to be next? And she's going, no, no, I've got plenty left in the tank. Well... As usual, she misled us. But today... Mm-hmm. Just a bit. <laughs> just a bit. Just a bit. And of course, we've got the over in North Dakota. Uh, I don't know what time it is for him, but it's our... our Happy hour. Himself. Mr. Boswell, how are we? What time is it there? It's um, it's about lunchtime. In fact, it is lunchtime. It's just after 12. Oh, okay. It's one, it's one with seven in the morning here. Yeah, How but as we... they say, it's five o'clock somewhere. Aye, well, we've picked 40, <laughs> 40 weeks and then uh, here I am. And oh, like the okay folks, do you all like the new t shirts? Yeah, available, you know, available. Um, so I'd like to start a reference that Eva made. I'd like um, if uh, John JD there could stick up. Alex Salmon summed it up again, showing his class. Um, and it is, there's been no questions of Nicholas Talents as a first-rate pol- political com- communicator and election winner. And having been there, I feel for her person on the day of her resignation. There are two questions for the future. One is that the movement has been left with no clear strategy for independence. The previously accepted referendum route has been closed and the de facto referendum election proposal is now at best up in the air. Secondly, there's no obvious successor. There are a range of able people in the SNP that will now be tested in the fire of leadership, inheriting a range of serious government policy challenges. It is to be hoped that those voices at which choose to reunite the national movement emerge to win that contest. Um, Phil, uh, a first-class statement from Alec. Um, he's a better man than I am, Gunga I think I would have come out, you know, swiping and battering. And, but he is uh, the consummate statesman and politician. And they put it quite succinctly, they're the problems um, that we have facing us and uh, congratulating a person who's done more to harm him than anyone else. Um, yeah. He's still a, a, a cut above the rest. Yeah, respect, respect. But I, I didn't expect anything less from Alex um, in stark contrast to what we've seen from Nicola and her acolytes and her tribe. But these are the, the two key issues here are... There is no clear strategy because the bumbling strategy that was half-heartedly adopted by Nicola only when she was pressurised wasn't a strategy of anything other than diverting attention from the fact that she didn't have a strategy. There wasn't a a, a clear strategy to India and she failed to capitalise on all the benefits that were handed to her. The second one, no obvious, obvious successor, contrast it to what Alex did by by making it quite clear that there was no there's no there's no other choice than Nicola had she lived up to her expectations had she followed through on the promises that she made 
to get into that position, then we wouldn't be having any of this conversation. She would have been down in history as a, as a legend, as the woman that took Scotland and gave us her independence. Right now, she's just another another puppet of the state, of the establishment that has failed us and let us down. So the contrast could be more striking on a day like this. Yeah, you know, and, and the, we'll go into Nicola's speech, but some of the lies and presumptions she made in there about her being a victim, this victim crap has got to stop. Nah, it's a, it's an interesting day, but this is just the first step on a long road to recovery for the SNP. Mm-hmm. She even had a wee dig at Alec on the way out in her speech about getting, uh, she wasn't happy that he was giving her advice after he had left office, demitted office. She should listen more and she wouldn't end up in the trouble she was in. Um, Eva, her speech, I found myself really aghast. Now, I know the, the BBC and ITV and Sky News have all been praising her, what wonderful. But one of the things I had done through it recently has been asking people, some of the priests for Indian mob, and saying, oh, she's so brilliant. So, well, name three things that she's done since she came into, she inherited the leadership of the SNP and the, the Yes movement, they've advanced the course of independence. And the answer is none, nothing, zilch, hee-haw. Can you name anything that she's done that advanced the cause from 2014? I'm sorry to say that I've got very mixed feelings about today's events. It's the beginning of the end for the SNP in terms of their current behaviour, if you like. But when, when Nicola became the leader, I was very pleased for the obvious reason that we were having a female first minister and also because obviously we share a profession. And so I was very, very full of high hopes, which were dashed only a couple of years into her leadership. So where we find ourselves now is not that surprising for anybody who's been watching developments over the course of the last few years. The failure um, to adopt a policy um, incorporating the supermajority that we spoke about in 2021 said it all. Um, And I think from then until now, there have been grave and increasing reservations as to what Nicola's priorities actually were. Her speech, I thought, was very sad, not because of the constant references to herself, but because of an obvious lack of reference to independence and to Scotland, to the priorities of the SNP, to the raison d'etre of the SNP, and to, you know, that dream that shall never die. She said she was basically leaving for other people to do it because she had, contrary to earlier reports, not so much left in the tank as she used to think she had. But we know that that is only the tip of the iceberg. There's a hell of a lot more to come out. So I think today was really just a wee bit of window dressing because did she fall or was she pushed? Was it the men in grey kilts or is it something else going on that we can all speculate about? Whatever it is, her achievements for Scotland, unfortunately, um, time will tell, have been pretty insignificant and in some respects very, very unfortunate. Um, I don't want to talk my country and my country people down, but there are grave issues facing the country just now and some of those problems could have been alleviated, if not completely solved had we had a stronger, more strategic, more intelligent, craftier, braver leader than, unfortunately, Nicola turned out to be. Yeah, uh, uh, well, well, both both you and Eva have made reference to it, uh, Yvonne. But uh, if, if JD could put up as well, there, there was an article come out not long after, in her speech, 153 times she used the words I or me or my. In Scotland, she only mentioned 11 times. Um, I think you would call that narcissism. Well, all I know is it was one of the longest resigning speeches in history. (laughs) It was like war and peace and more. Um, But I also think it's like the Godfather sequel. I think that there's far more to come. And (laughs) episode two is going to be so much better than the um, the original, and as Eva said, it's you know we'd say every week 
for God's sake, Nicola, just go. And so, in theory, we should be punching the air and going, yay, great, she's gone. But I feel really sorry for those people in Scotland who are in their 70s and 80s who must be thinking, my God, I will never see the dream of independence come true. That's me. That's well, me. I'm in my... Our spring chickens, are we? But, you know, it, it's just really, it's for those people I feel so sad. And I am so angry with those that are left in the SNP who are going, oh, this is such a shock. And we're going to have more false shocks from them over the coming weeks as the real details start to come out. You know, these people in the SNP that have presided over a party where 600 grand has gone missing. The police are investigating. These are all facts, so they needn't go, oh, you know, what? what's this? There's a lot of murkiness in there. The one question that she was not willing or able or capable to of answering was about this speculation that the SNP is mired in fraud. So, you know, now is the time for transparency. She's moved on, so let's find out where is the 600,000? What are the police investigating? Why did Mr. Sturgeon write out a check for 107,000? Did he get interest from it? Has he been paid back? Why is he still there? Surely he has to go. Well, you know, he's CEO um, of the SNP. What's he doing still in position? And where has he been for the last two or three months? For all we know, he could be under the patio. Nobody's seen hiding the hair of him. Well, uh, the rumours are abounding that he's not resigned. Unlike his wife, um, but people are a lot of people are already saying just like you know he has to go. Um, uh, Phil, I, there's a I can't remember what it's called uh, after the Chancellor in the, the the UK Parliament does the budget speak. There's a, a a book that comes out with the detail later, so that if he's turned around and said, "Well, I've taken Public case, yeah. off a pint of beer and I've taken twenty pence off a bottle of whiskey." And then we go, oh, that's good. And then it's not till the next day when you get this book and you start reading through the book and go, "Wait, wait a minute." He's done it somewhere else and caught us all. And, and if one's alluded to it here, this is what's going to happen. I mean, I've already had lots of rumours sent to me. I mean, I'm sure we all have. Um, and in this programme, we pride ourselves on only doing things with facts. However, today's a, a different day. We'll maybe talk about a few of these things. But there is things going to come out. And because when I listened to the speech, I didn't actually hear the current reason, a real reason of why she was calling it a day. I mean, she was. She used this, which I thought was terrible, about the poor man's death, the funeral she was at, which finally tipped her over the edge of getting out. I thought that was really in bad taste. Um, or maybe that's just me. But we didn't actually hear the real reason. Well, I, I didn't hear a reason. Did you a real absolute nail of a reason why she was chucking it? No, I, I started analysing what she'd said. And, you know, in a nutshell, you could say, I suspect the contents of the emails of Stuart Macdonald's expose or, or part of the truth of what's going on uh, will will shed some light on this. The loss of support across MPs, MSPs and the continuing unravelling of our BAMPOP policy initiatives and critically the abandonment of the independence move, uh, independence for Scotland as the prime director for the party, including as as Eva said earlier, the um, failure to seize opportunities presented by ALBA, primarily supermajority <laughs> being one of them. Um, it's all coming to head right now, but you know I'm hearing as well internally that there has been some, and I know you guys are probably going to be following in Alex's footsteps and being not as, and, and I'm not happy about this. This is a sad first step of many that are required to fix the SNP because you don't, it's not like cutting the head off a snake. You know, this this the apparatus 
is all there. The people who do the bidding, the people who make her do what she she uh, did and betray the independence movement are all still in, still in place. The SNP are infiltrated. And for me, I'm, I'm not for fawning over the sacrifice of public service, as she said, for the greater good story, because I know that's not true. You know, what you said earlier, the me, 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 how many times she mentioned herself in it, it's a clear indicator. And Scotland, 11 times from me, from what you were saying. But Nicola has been in this for Nicola from the very start. And just ask those who worked alongside her and from the very early days, right up to the end of this chapter in her career. She has been and is arrogant, cold, dispassionate, and severely compromised. And this is why she had to resign. Not because it's for the greater good, but she has failed. That that didn't cause, that should have caused her to resign, but that's not why she's resigning. Her past has caught up with her. The missing 600,000, the check, as Yvonne mentioned earlier, that was signed. I believe she and her hubby have finally been formally questioned on it. And I hope that's true, because for once, let there be justice for a change in the Scottish judicial system under St Nicola's reign, because we've seen very little sign of that um, and, and a lot of questionable actions by people who should know and do better and who have a duty of care to we the people to uphold the fine traditions of the Scottish judicial system. So she also says, I remember one, one line that stuck, it, stuck out was, my decision comes from a position of duty and love tough love perhaps my arse Nicola love for my party and above all my country that is not the case her duty was to gain independence for Scotland and by far the biggest contribution she has made since being in office for eight years is resigning and that's that's a disgrace your biggest contribution is to get out of the way I, and, and, and we've only just begun because there are plenty more ready they're massaging their egos, they're smartening themselves up, putting their best suit on, ready to step in into this breach because they know that the setup is all there. And you shysters, you, you're, you're tease out as well. We've got to continue the deconstruction to rebuild because, uh, you know, you, you think about the reasons. You know, we've already went through. I mean, the, the priority focus of self-ID for, and, and, and and what that's done, it's in tatters. And the next one that's coming up is this bottles return scheme, which is not as serious, but it's also poor. Very, very weak. But Stuart's emails, I'm very much looking forward to seeing what he's got, well, what, what he had to say privately and what's well, going to come out there. You should say that. Um, stick around, folks. Oh, good, good, um, good. And, uh, and the, the, the final part well, was... Sorry, the, the final part was then she asked a rhetorical question about whether it's right to continue with her lifelong devotion to the cause of independence. Well, you fooled me, love, because had that indeed been your priority, we should already be there, or Can certainly I, a damn sight closer than we are now. Yeah, um, I would say her two greatest achievements are the Alba Party and the ISP Party. <laughs> uh, you know, she achieved that. I mean, if you actually think about it, Eva, from 1934 when the SNP was founded right up until 2020, there was only one independence party. There was no need for another one. But in her reign, at one point, there was five. Five. I don't include the Greens, by the way. I'll come to them in a minute. But uh, there was five parties just before the, the May 2020 election. Um, that didn't happen because of... Uh, people who were unionists or loons, as we were, uh, accused of being, because we, we, the old traditionalists, the fundamentalists, were not happy with the way the party was going. Um, but Phil has opened it up. Um, I don't know if you saw Craig Murray's uh, article today, Eva. He didn't hold back. He suggested that the minute um, she went to the Supreme Court and lost, she lost her um, usefulness to the union and it was after that that the, the attacks from the very benign anti-Scottish British media in Scotland kicked off at her and they increased the pressure and it didn't take long for that pressure from the British media before she capitulated mm -hmm. is there a connection? Is, is Craig maybe egging it up? 
I think he's possibly egging that up a bit, but I do think that there is potentially a Supreme Court connection, but in a different way. Um, what we know is that the named person uh, court proceedings didn't go well. Um, we know that the children and children's rights and human rights court action didn't go well. We've got this um, current impasse for Westminster, and we know that unfortunately in the past, Nicola's not always been terribly good at taking the legal advice given by independent legal advisors paid for with our money. So I strongly suspect that she jumped the gun in a rage um, when she immediately announced, before we had even seen the detailed reasons for, for Alistair Jack, in effect, you know, drawing a halt to the GRR bill, she said at that point that there would be a judicial review, there would definitely be court action. But between then and now, we've seen Shona Robson slightly backtrack and suggest, well, we're considering this. And I think in the real world, one of the issues for Nicola is that she's likely to have been told by experienced independent legal advisors exactly what other people, free of charge on social media, have been telling her for years, that she wasn't mm -hmm. going to win that court action in terms of coming up against either the Equality Act of 2010 or the Original Gender Reform Act of 2004, both being pieces of Westminster legislation. And she would not want to climb down. The um, GRR bill was such a centre point of her own personal manifesto that she wouldn't want to be saying to folk, well, sorry, I've had independent legal advice, and it turns out that, after all, I was wrong. So I think that, yes, going to the Supreme Court was a problem, but I think a bigger problem for her is the GRR bill and not really wanting to understand until now that she was not likely to get that through after all the promises that she made, the video in the broom cupboard, and the alienation, the utter alienation of hundreds of thousands of the electorate, you know, not just women. And I'm, I'm not wearing my purple jacket today because I'm a big fan of Donny Osmond. I'm wearing it because I'm making a statement quite deliberately. The women of Scotland and the Women Won't Peace campaign are correctly jubilant today. And I'm not jubilant, but I know that they are. Um, and you've seen tweets where they've said, well, Nicola, who's valid now? You know, remember the hand went up, things were not to be discussed, all this kind of stuff. So, you know, I, I believe in karma. I, I believe that as you sow, so shall you reap. And I think that she will reap um, the rewards of the failures. Um, and her biggest failure of all has been the absolute point blank, I would say, willful refusal to implement the mandates that she was given over and over and over again. She didn't even try to begin to negotiate any kind of independence referendum. She wouldn't get the finger out in relation to the process. She took far too long to react sensibly and appropriately and with, you know, completely lacking in any dynamism or urgency or drive towards independence. She just floated through what was basically quite a comfortable life at times, I think, probably oblivious um, at best, uncaring at worst to the trials and the tribulations of so many people in this country. So overall, not sad to see her go, but I'm very worried about what lies ahead if there's not going to be an injection of common sense into that party. Um, we had an interruption by our usual, the, the, the prison dog there. I don't know which one of you it was, but the prison, prison wouldn't be the same without a dog interrupting us. There you go. Um, everyone, I go back to this point about the, the British press, the anti-Scottish press. The, um, we've seen them up close. They're, they're not very impressive, but when they smell blood, you know, as a journalist yourself, when they smell blood, and it seemed the amount of time when even someone like Paul Hutchison, Hutchison can tie her up in knots, but just the simple question, is Adam Graham a man or a woman, and she hummed and hawed and she showed a flaw and they were on to it and they were all going for it and they were all pushing at her and she couldn't even part that. Did they smell blood? Were they right to smell blood? Is it, it Why didn't they smell the blood before? Well, you're right. The journalists do uh, hunt in a pack. And there is that pack mentality where they do smell blood and they'll go for the jugular. But I thought they let her off very lightly during the press conference today. 
in mm. fact, I was waiting for the, you know, when she called for the first question, I was waiting for somebody to say, First Minister, what what is a woman? And uh, funnily enough, it was uh, a tweet from Piers Morgan who said it was extraordinary to see Nicola Sturgeon, one of the most successful and impressive female leaders in modern UK history, now see her leadership unravelling because she doesn't know what a female is. And, you know, we keep talking about legacy on this show and what is her legacy going to be. The legacy is going to be the GRR. That is what mm. her legacy is going to be. And um, I've, uh, Eva and I have uh, a couple of national women's conferences coming up, uh, the first in Aberdeen this weekend. Um, and I'm sure that this is going to be the, the topic of conversation. But I've been in amongst the chat rooms today and the vitriol coming from uh, women towards Sturgeon is unbelievable. In fact, I didn't feel anything like that since Thatcher went. And Thatcher was her nemesis. She said, you know, she was radical in politics by Thatcher, and yet she has invoked exactly the same emotion in people uh, as Thatcher did. And uh, you know, that, that's another part of her, her legacy. Her legacy is not going to be a very good one. And this is something that, you know, if she was joining the growing number of prison viewers, this is something that she should have focused on because we've always talked, what will her legacy be? You didn't mention baby boxers, Siobhan. Oh, for goodness sake. Do you know... It's, uh, I've, I just did that to wind you up, Yvonne, you know. Uh, I've studiously ignored that, although I noticed that it was mentioned two or three times on... Uh, actually, uh, actually, beyond that, she's not got much going for her, Yvonne, really, uh -huh. genuinely. I mean, I, 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 Angus Robertson was on a sycophantic tweet today saying, you know, how wonderful she was and brought in all her achievements. And I said, could you list those achievements, please, Angus? Um, I'm still waiting for a reply. When you uh, none was forthcoming. Mm -hmm. um, and the other one was in her speech today, Phil, um, she was talking about how she hoped now uh, that politics would get gentle and that we wouldn't be so... And what was it polarizing? And there wouldn't be, you know, there wouldn't be so many people driving division. God Almighty, Phil, she drove the division. She, she, no one was more polarizing than her. Her refusal to work with other other independence parties, SNP one two only. Um, she was the division. She created, as I said, the Alpha Party and the ISP Party, and the, the other parties that were there for a while. Um. The hypocrisy in that speech was incredible. Yes, yes, 100%. And uh, no more friction. She hopes for gentle politics. She, But she's just the, the face of this machine. This machine has been put in place. This is this goes back to that que the last question. You know, why didn't the mainstream press not take Nicola to task previously? Well, it's simple. She was allied to the same allies that they're in with the establishment. She reversed full speed away from independence as fast as her puppet masters wanted her to. And advice, and, and, and advice I would give anyone who doubts that is, is, is basically life advice that if you want to assess someone, any person, and this applies to Nicola and particularly here, watch the actions, not the words. The actions, not the words. And you you, you, you contrast with what she has done or failed to do more critically over the last eight years versus what she said that was all about during that nonsense speech. So no, what, what she did in the divisive nature, she was core to this division that was created, this split. But what we should be very conscious of, and we're all very worried about going ahead here, because we know the influences, are, the, the claws are still, from the establishment, are still well and truly dug into the SNP 
and we have to wrestle the SNP free or abandon it. That, that, that's the choices that the independence movement has to make, and that's horrific. That shows you how strong and how good they are and how poor Nicola was. And Angus Robertson, you're a disappointment, mate. You're, you used to be, I, I used to consider him a friend, but now, I, like anyone who betrays me, no. And you betrayed us, you betrayed the people of Scotland, the people of the SNP, the, the people that mattered, the members, when you removed their control over the NEC and you put it in the hands of these shysters and these... Yeah, you, you played right in the hands. So I don't trust them at all. So no, when when the other thing I, I watched uh, Nicola's speech, she went on and she said she's not getting the violins out, and then proceeds to get the violins out. You know, she, it, my niece and my nephew were babies. Now they're late teens. Well, what of their future, Nicola? You have not furthered the benefits of this country that that this that has that we have. The assets we have for your family or any of ours. So again, no, you failed after eight years as a deputy under someone you stitched up along with your shysters. Then eight years as FM, uh, which is something you were handed on a plate and still you failed. So don't lament, don't, don't no crocodile tears for anyone, especially your family, when you failed to deliver our freedom and our people continue to suffer because you did not deliver, and you maybe maybe you did have intention, and, and I want to, I will soften it a little bit because you know the the pressure has got to me. That's a fair comment and a very human one that I agree with here, but again, it should be from <laughs> it should be from unionist who she's fighting for her independence, you know, not it, not the people who want independence. That that's where the pressure should have come from. But it didn't. The pressure had to come from us, the people she purports to represent and purports to fight for. Mm. She didn't. It had to come from us. And what she should have been suffering the slings and arrows like Alex did of the unionists because they truly fear him. They do not fear her because she's been in their pocket from very early on, tragically. Yeah, she talked about time in the party and uh, I was in the party before her. And uh, my commitment to the cause of independence has never wavered. But I felt I had, I could no longer stay in the SNP. And I'm not alone. There's so many people like me. I tried so, some sitting here and plenty we know. But uh, Eva, um, the, the, one of the first things that happened after the resignation, the SNP were out like a, a guinea hound out the traps at Shawfield to say, well, the special, the special conference might have to be cancelled, which is 31 days away and will be 119 days after the Supreme Court decision and they're now talking about cancelling it and kicking the can down the road again because of her resignation. Now, Scotland cannot wait any longer for a plan. As Alec, as I highlighted at the start of the show, there is no plan, there's no strategy. We need one and we need one now. And one of the things, you've called for it, I've called for it, we've all called for it. We need a constitutional convention. Now, whoever who takes over from her, that should be the first job. Thanks very much, Nicola, by the way. I'm calling the Constitutional Convention. The other thing, Eva, you could answer for me while we're at it. I, I could go a lot further than that, actually, Roddy, because Nicola is still in the job. She is the First Minister. She's not leaving that job until there's a successor appointed. I'm not sure how long that process takes, but it seems to be more than 100 days in terms of the SNP constitution. So she has got plenty of time to do a number of things. You know, as independence is the goal. So Allegedly. She Aye. She promised the Constitutional Convention in January 20. Mm -hmm. So here we are more than three years later. She can announce it now because there is nobody within her party who's likely to become leader that can possibly disagree with that strategy. We've covered this so many times before that in most democratic countries in the world, when you're seeking achievement, when you're seeking to achieve independence, you normally understand that you are not likely to achieve that without having a properly constituted, reasonably democratic, representative body of people such as a convention would bring. So there's no reason not to have a constitutional convention unless independence is not actually your priority. So she could do that tonight. It could have its first meeting before the weekend. 
What you could also do is speak to colleagues within the SNP with a view to invoking the powers in the 2016 Act, altering the standing orders of the Parliament and collapsing Holyrood so as to create yep. a referendum or an election later in the year, perhaps on referendum day. Remember, no ifs, no buts, 19th October 2023. These are jobs she could set in motion right now. She doesn't have to wait. Her party could hold their conference next month they could invite people from other independent supporting parties there to contribute like ALBA has done. We had a National Assembly in, we've had two National Assemblies since the Supreme Court decision. And we've had a Spring National Council since that decision. We're in planning of a, a Spring Conference. We've had all these different events when the SNP in effect sat on their hands. So in terms of driving independence forwards, Angus Brendan McNeil's got a master plan. He's got colleagues who agree with him. There are splits in the SNP at Westminster. There are splits in the SNP at Holyrood. What needs to happen is that every single elected politician who believes in independence should say to the people of Scotland, tomorrow at a joint press conference, let's go for it. Let's do it this year. Nicola, good on you. She set the, the hair running. She's kicked it into, you know, kick the ball off, we're all playing for the same team, we're all wearing the same jersey, we're united as one for Scotland and we're having that referendum because what's changed is we're no lying down to the Supreme Court and we're no lying down to Westminster, we're not accepting the Supreme Court's decision, what we're going to do is give voice to the majority of the people of Scotland who quite clearly want to head towards independence and the way to do that is to unite all of the Yes movement and all of the independent supporting parties in a real, determined, courageous, confident and honest campaign towards mm -hmm. independence, not party political adventures such as we've seen over the course of the last few years. Um, Scotland's not got time to waste. Um, we spoke about people that are not here anymore that have, you know, we've lost the dream or those of us who are getting older are wondering whether we'll ever see it. We've all lost people that didn't see it that would have given a hell of a lot to. So I'm not going to my deathbed without seeing it, you're damn sure. So that's the spirit that we need. Get out there, get fighting, get angry, get mobilised and make it happen, Nicola. I wish, I wish. Um, she did say in her speech as well, uh, Eva, uh, Yvonne rather, um, I won't interfere. I will leave it to, to the NEC of the SNPT. She interfered in the, the NEC, so it's all her appointments and appointees. And she said, well, I won't interfere in any way, shape or form, but they should keep the agreement with the Greens. Um, yeah, do we believe that she won't be interfering, even from the back benches? Well, she might try and interfere, but she's a busted flush now. She has no influence, no power. Um, I wish that all of the MSPs in Holyrood would listen to Eva and resign tomorrow and uh, bring about the plebiscite election of Holyrood that we want, you know, mm -hmm. who knows um, if they suddenly all grow a spine, that might just happen. And the person to start it, and I don't know if she watches this or not, is Ash Reagan. She's a young... Um, vibrant, independently-minded MSP uh, who ploughs her own furrow. She's not afraid of uh, the old guard. She could stand up to them. Uh, she has done before. And I would love to see Ash Reagan do an Eva Comrie and stand up tomorrow and tell her fellow MSPs, come on, this is it. This is the chance. Let's go for it. We can bring, we can force independence now if we all resign and create this vacuum in Holyrood. So, you know, Ash, if you're watching, please do it. I agree with you. I think she's the best choice. I mean, I saw some people promoting Kate Forbes, but um, two things I would say, and I put a tweet on it and I said, no. I don't agree with Kate Forbes, and I think Ash Reagan should be, because when 
when it was needing to be brave and stand up, Ash Reagan stood up against the GRRB bill. She gave up her post. Kate Forbes was hiding um, under the guise of a maternity leave, whereas there was a, a Tory MP who was also maternity leave. She came back to vote. Um, we know that during, for example, the referendum in 2014, Kate Forbes was nowhere to be seen. So, no, she's a, a bit... I, I'm, with, I'm with you and Ash Reagan, and I'm going to come on to contenders in a minute and we'll discuss them, because I've got a wee, another wee uh, slide I want to get uh, JD to talk shortly. But before I do that, um, uh, Phil, it's only right I tell you... Uh, now, I'm going to tell you, I, I was sent in, not by Craig Murray, if anyone's listening from Police Scotland, um, but someone else sent me some stuff that was coming out in um, Stuart McDonald's um, emails. And as I'm in Thailand and live in España, um, if you want to come and knock my door, flights aren't great at this time of year, boys. But anyway, um, one of the things that Stuart was apparently, um, when we get the full stuff, <laughs> we'll put it right out, but he was congratulating Nicola, the, the trans right lobby had got so much publicity because they couldn't afford to buy publicity. Um, but it also got rid of people like me and you and you and you from the party, um, the old dinosaurs, as he called us, the people that were just too uh, obsessed, too obsessed in independence. How did you like that? When you were too obsessed in independence, even it's your fault. Um, and so it helped get rid of them and it gave them political clout uh, and although they'd lost a lot of their foot soldiers, um, it was a price worth paying for the good of the trans community. What do you make of that, Phil? Clown. Giant <laughs> clown face. You betray. You betrayed us, Stuart. You need to go as well. Finish this guy politically. Finish him. And, and I've, I've, I've counted as a friend, but not anymore. No, you, friends don't betray you. As you've alluded to, but it's not just Nicola, you're right, you can't really have the snake. Morrell's got to go. He's, he should never have been, the day he, um, the day she took over, he should have stepped down or been forced to step down. That's a fact. Uh, in no other walk of life or organ. I mean, they wouldn't let that happen in the bowling club, Phil. You know what I mean? Exactly. The bowling well, club. That's the thing, when she, when she says to another thing she was speaking about was, can I um, battle on? Well, can I give it? Every can I battle on? Yes, versus can I give every ounce of energy that as I have through all my time as first minister? No, she she says she can't, but and that's it. The last question just before the you asked, uh, um, Yvonne, yes, she will continue to interfere. She's done as she's done as a leader, but the network she and the establishment created is very much in place. All of these people are still in place. The system that removed us, that removed those who stood in the way of the establishment, those who were too <laughs> I can't I can't believe well, I can't believe it was said. Too caught up in the whole independence thing, too passionate about it, too preoccupied with it. What is that? It's just so stupid, so foolish, so naive, so ignorant, and such a betrayal of our, our the prime directive. So, so the the, the question that she asked is um, is crazy. You, you know, we she asked herself, you know, can I give evidence of energy, as um, as I have given myself to the independence movement? Stuart McDonald's uh, emails will show, will illustrate that this was a lie, because. It's a false assumption. She hasn't. She she failed to prioritise the independence of her country. You failed to put the people of Scotland first. Instead, you marched us up hills. We didn't want to march up on your various personal crusades and entirely missed the point. You were elected in position to give us Indy, and you failed miserably on that. You did, however, set the Indy cause not just on the back burner, but you've set it back by severely damaging the unification of the independence mm -hmm. movement, as was created under the 2014 um, referendum campaign. Also, the Scottish government's reputation we all worked so hard to create under Alex. And you've worked a long, and this is the key point here, that people need to please look into this and please investigate this. Um, not, and you won't find it in the mainstream media. Um, you worked against us, Nicola, alongside Perfidious Albion. And this is where Craig Murray, I believe, has the right of it. He has some very good sources and connections. So 
she has worked with the establishment in splitting the indie movement and i believe craig and many others including wings over scotland uh have and will eventually release some of this and and yourself now roddy so he'll mend you nicola for dancing with the devil and betraying your own yep i don't have the emails in my possession yet but i'm sure they're winging their way towards me um but, and will i publish them oh you little model no um Eva, the, the the question now of course is you know what happens next um a new leader will sooner or later be elected. Um, we think there should be, whoever it is, we've made our point, there should be a constitutional convention. But let's look at the contenders. Um, JD, can you stick up that thing that was, came through? The, the bookies weren't long in putting up. And if we look here, we see Angus Roberts and even money. Kate Forbes, two to one. Ash Reagan in there at six to one. Ben McPherson, 16 to one. Mary McAllen, I don't even know this woman, 16 to one. And the old Booms are useless at 16 to 1. Um, to me, uh, the only one I see there, uh, I'm, I'm with uh, Yvonne here, is Ash Reagan, because she was the only one that stood up and stood against and said it was, you know, this is what's beaten us, because the opinion polls ha have said, you know, that we're back worse than we were in 2014, Eva, because of the GRR. That's just a fact. And, and, and uh, in my opinion, Ash Reagan was the only one that stood up to that. The rest of them didn't. Well, I don't know the legalities of this, but I think that a first step that should be considered is that the SNP should try and distance itself from the Greens because the Greens in government with the SNP has not been a good look um, and it's not been good for Scotland generally and it has definitely not been good for the independence cause. So I think that that's something that should be considered whoever becomes the new leader of the SNP. But I think that this is an opportunity for those people in the SNP, whether they're in current leadership roles or otherwise, to think very seriously about their motivation and what they want their personal legacies and political legacies to be. And if there is a genuine desire within the SNP for a referendum in October and for independence to be achieved at the soonest, earliest possible opportunity, then the SNP should be speaking to themselves bluntly, honestly and openly, and they should be coming up with a unity candidate that the entire movement will respect. And there is only one name really in that list that the entire movement is likely to be able to respect. Most of them are either divisive or they bring with them baggage, politically or otherwise, that has no place in modern Scotland. Some of the folk on that list have made an absolute burach of every department that they've ever been in charge of, and some of them have been over-promoted whilst being under-qualified, in some cases woefully so. Others are too young and too inexperienced and don't really understand the world, life and politics properly yet. So if the ethos of the SNP is going to be reset, if we're going to talk in terms of looking for independence because we want decisions made in by and for the people of Scotland and we want to see the furtherance of all Scottish interests, then the way to do that is not to have a long drawn out contest and wait and see who's the last man or woman standing. The way to do that, which is Scottish centric, is to have the guts and the courage and the dignity to get together with one candidate in mind and then go to the other independence parties and say to them, let's have a constitutional convention, let's get all motors running, all shoulders to the wheel, let's appoint a, a genuine leader of a yes movement and let's use all potential drivers towards October the 19th as being the day that will be decision day for Scotland because we cannot continue in this false limbo that we've had ever since 2014. We need action now, and we need a responsible, sensible leader that folk will respect, not somebody who was able to stand beside Sturgeon and others and tell lies and make us an international laughing stock by trying to pretend that a man could become a woman, etc. Those days have got to be gone, over, done with. 
and let's get the country back into the condition it should be with a competent government where there is no doubt that the furtherance of the Scottish interests are exactly the priority and the only priority. Yep. I would say, I should say here that the, the reason, and a lot of people I know our viewers are great um, uh, supporters of Joanna Cherry, and the reason why you'll see that Joanna's not in there, or Philippa Whitford, two brilliant-minded ladies, is that they're in Westminster, and uh, it's, you know, it's sort of accepted the leader of the SNP has to be in Holyrood. And Nick, that's why Nicola made sure that Joanna couldn't get in. She made sure it was engineered to get in her vocal, um, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, it's gone from Angus. Robert. Robertson. I just couldn't get My middle name as well. Couldn't get it. I had smell, folks. It's nearly two o'clock in the morning here in Thailand. I've been up all day riding elephants, looking at tigers. Um, Yvonne, you were asking, you don't know if she watches the programme or not. No, I don't know if she watches or not, but I do know quite a lot of SNP MPs and MSPs do, and I do get quite a lot of private messages from a lot. Um, and a lot of them saying, keep up the good work. There's a lot of people out there ready, and I think some will come through. But whoever takes over, Yvonne, if they don't scrap the GRRB, that's got to be you know, one of the first things they do and say, we're putting that aside. Like, uh, you know me, I'm, a, as you all know, a big Republican, and I've always said, no, that should be answered once we get independence, then we can get into things like Angus Robson tried to tie in the EU. If you vote for independence, you're voting for the EU. That should be sidelined as well. There's one goal here, Yvonne, and whoever comes in has got to scrap the GRRB. That's divisive. Get rid of it. As Eva says, unite the Yes movement. I'm going to come on to that with Phil in a minute. Um, and forget about the EU and the monarchy till after we'll get independence. Just the one thing. Am I right? You're on mute. Yes. Eva's bang on the money as usual, a unity candidate. What about him next door, Phil? That's exactly I'm coming to in a minute. About the, right. the yes group. You know, we've uh, what qualifications do you need to be FM? You know, our Phil could go for it. All right, another job for him. All oh, right. Well. Um, Ash Reagan could go for it. Sadly, because of the uh, the machinations within the SNP, um, they've made it impossible for Joanna Cherry to stand. She's the greatest FM we'll never have, sadly. And, uh, you know, you mentioned Philippa Whitford as well. So it is going to be interesting and it will be... What, what I want to know is uh, what the SNP um, in Westminster are thinking now, what they're up to, uh, because, you know, they're as dodgy as a sack of ferrets as well. So there's going to be all sorts um, going on. And uh, it would be great to hear from uh, PRISM viewers who their choice would be and, and why. Um, I mean, I would hate to see any of um, any of the old guard in charge because, you know, we're going to get more of the same SH1T, whereas um, a unity candidate would be something... Somebody who can unify and pull everyone together and who can also work with Alipa because we're ready and waiting and and have been. I don't think any party has worked harder than Alipa and possibly the ISP to work for the October 19 date, which could still happen if well, should. the ISPs in Holyrood get together and give the people what they want which is an election. Yep, yep, absolutely. Um, Phil, um, on that, you know, I, I agree, I've, I've made my point, I'm not going to go over it again. I think new leader for the SNP, I think Ash Reagan's the best one. But we do, as, as Eve alluded to, we need someone to lead the S movement over and above. It has to be a non-political unifier. Stand up and take a bow, Mr. Boswell. You were very influential in the S movement in 2014. It's a job that someone like you could do. You're respected. 
Well, you'd expect that, yeah, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, it takes more than that. You have to be, be able to commit, and uh, there are many, many with a great deal, many more skills than I who would take this on. Uh, the job that was done previously um, by Blair um, Jenkins was was very impressive. It was it was a brilliant strategy, and and it came yet again from the pen of Alex Salmon. So we need to be pragmatic here. I mean, I mean, don't forget how influential the cabal led by Nicola still is. You know, she said, "I don't want to influence the decision. The party will make it conference on Indy." You know, <laughs> you know, given given how the steam I'm held in and other such assorted hogwash. What, who's left in the party might be still kissing their backside, but very few mm. others are. Um, so pragmatism is required from the experienced in such matters. So Alex Salmon being the obvious one. But we need to be sensible and practical about this. The obvious um, Ash Reagan stands out a mile from those who have been mentioned there. There may be some other runners and riders, but I totally agree. It can't be the usual suspects. But Ash Reagan, plus those who stood up for the people on GRR, must form the core of SNP going forward. And we need to re change the constitution and allow the members to make decisions. Only then will members come back, because a lot of the best ones have left and gone to Alba. The constitutional convention, absolutely. But ditching the Greens, and, the, and, and it's only half, that's only the first step, embracing Alba. That's the second part of that. You have to we have to do that because, you know, they're, 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 we know by now how difficult it is to create a new party from scratch. And Alex, is, well, Alba have done a magnificent job. ISP, for all, I rates a lot, of, quite a few of the people in there, they really haven't made the head roads. They haven't made the ends. And the sensible, pragmatic thing would only be provide two choices in elections to only to amalgamate, if you will, um, as you would with the Greens. So I don't think anything that jeopardises votes should be countenanced, and that would include uh, having a variety of, of indie parties. An alternative to make sure SNP stay on, on check. The last thing you should do is reverse away from SNP because Nicholas has resigned. Pressure needs to be kept on, and Alba's the right vehicle for this because we can't trust those who currently control the SNP. And, and, and how you do that? What does that mean? Well, if you want the people of Scotland to be free to choose whatever path they want you, because Nicola not only has run out ideas, she was never really, for quite a long time, there has not been really intended to give us a shot at the title. And a strategy such as it was remained fundamentally flawed. We need to get rid of the shysters within SNP and return it to former glories. And that includes, and one example would be all SMP committee members scrutinising the GRR bill, for example. Now, that's a contradiction in terms. They did not scrutinise the GRR bill. They were apologists, and they were an absolute disgrace. They lacked spine, vision, integrity, and let's name them, Joe Fitzpatrick, Karen Adam, Fulton McGregor, Cowcob Stewart, on your bike, get out. You, you lack the gumption, you lack the principle, you lack the ability to do the right thing, the, 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 the courage to do the right thing. So we get, that, that's, that's one tranche we need to get rid of. Get rid of all those who fail to stand up against the, no, the nonsense that Nicola and the establishment have espoused. Um, and and you, there's a big rebuild coming. It's a bit like, uh, it's a wee bit like uh, Big Ange taking over Celtic. Big rebuild, big job, but it can be done and we can be champions again. Get it up, your Roddy. He's <laughs> uh, put me off a thought here. <laughs> Eva, uh, there's been like a couple there. Um, they, if they, if they cancel their, their, their special conference in 31 days, um, it kind of pushes into limbo. Then you, you're into the summer before you know, and they'll want to elect their new leader. Why not put in someone just now on a temporary basis? Now I know the constitution states that the deputy leader should take over, but we're talking about we need to unify and reinvigorate the party. But here's a suggestion: while we're waiting and Ash getting officially elected in October, why not put in Fergus Ewing 
you can't go wrong with a Ewing. Mm-hmm. Um, there's someone um, that no one would dare. That's a name that you don't go against in the SNP, is it? A very good idea to do something like that, Roddy, but we, we need to have this reset where we talk about what the priorities are. So I think that somebody like Fergus Ewing, or perhaps even his sister Annabel, would be very good in terms of bringing people together from both ALBA and the ISP and the SNP mm-hmm. with a view to having a very focused drive yeah. um, where there's compromise as well as agreement and where there are sensible negotiations as opposed to what we've seen, um, you know, offers from ALBA to work with others that have just been the subject of point blank refusals. Um, because independence is not about the individuals. Independence is about the future of our country. And we want independence and we have to remind everybody as to why we want independence. We want it because we need to see the decisions made here in Scotland. We need to have total control of our own resources so that we can shape the country the way that the majority of the people want to see it shaped. From very basic things such as, you know, healthcare, literally from the cradle to the grave, education, bring people out of poverty by making sure that they have an egalitarian approach towards education and life chances and real social justice. Give people hope, make sure that people can be trained, they can learn, they can be nurtured, there can be a proper safety net provided by society, provided by government for children, adults, elderly people, anybody that it is that needs a safety net, make sure that our society is rich enough both in terms of of wealth, but also of the wealth of the people and our hopes and our aspirations are those which are the values of the people of Scotland, not what we've got at the moment where we, you know, we're, we're, we're some people are subsisting and very barely surviving under Tory rule. We've had hundreds of thousands of people die in the UK as the result of austerity. Tens of thousands in Scotland have died or are suffering very badly because of Tory policies that we would never, as a country, elect. We would never choose to be governed by the Tories and certainly not the lot that we've got in power at the moment. So this is about the big picture, the big principled picture, whereby we deliver to the people of Scotland what it is that they want and they need. And so that we would have the country that Scotland can be. You know, no, no more people shivering because we'd have a national energy company people able to eat because our farming industry and our food industry and all of that stuff would be properly husbanded. Where the wealth created from forestry or fishery or whisky or tourism is spent in Scotland, where we do duel the A9 on time and we do build bridges and we do build hospitals and we do build schools and children don't have to pay to go to the swimming baths and they don't have to pay to learn music and they don't have to pay to go on school trips and all that sort of stuff. All of that is possible, provided that we've got all the economic levers at our disposal in Edinburgh or Glasgow, if it's the capital, or Inverness or whatever the hell it is. But we decide for ourselves. That's what we need. And we need that now, not next year or the next decade. We've waited long enough. We shouldn't be waiting now. Correct. And I wish we had a winnie of 30 years ago. Mind you, if we had... This wouldn't have gone on as long as it did. God love her. My, still my hero. We're just, we've got to come to the end now because we told the people it was going to go out about seven o'clock and if we don't stop now, we're going out a lot later, Yvonne. But I am more optimistic this morning than I was this morning when I woke up. Um, I am more optimistic now because I, I have to say it, and I've said it often, she's been a blockage in the way of our, our movement and uh, for advancing our cause. So I'm optimistic. Are you? You're not optimistic enough to pop your mute button. I am quietly optimistic, uh, not least of all because of Eva's suggestion over the unity candidate and uh, the prospect of somebody like Ash Reagan standing up against the old God. The last thing, what will bring me right back down into a depression is if the old God elbow their way to the front and want to be heard. Um, The other benefits of uh, Nicola 
Sturgeon picking today to do her resignation speech, it completely bumped off that pompous git, Keir Starmer, who announced that uh, Jeremy Corbyn would not be standing as a Labour candidate. Um, and uh, which I think has come as, as shock news to uh, Jeremy Corbyn, who I confidently predict will win his uh, his way. But um, the the only other question that I've got that nobody will answer, and maybe you might have the answer in your box of tricks, Roddy, is. What went on in the Balmoral Hotel? Because nobody will tell me. Phil knows. Mm -hmm. Look at that laugh. And Eva. Everybody knows apart from me. DM me, please, and let me know. When I, when I see you, next time I see you, you know, give me a few gins. <laughs> I'll give you the... They bother. Friends, um, we, have, we have got to stop just now. We have overrun a wee bit, as usual. But we have to stop. Apart from anything else, it's ten past two in the morning. I'm shattered, uh, and I'm ready for my kip because I've got to take my granddaughter tomorrow to the surfing centre. That should be a laugh. At my age, that's where you get broken hips. Um, so anyway, thank you for your contribution, and we'll be back on Sunday. Now, basically, you've talked yourself out. We don't get talked out. I think there'll be plenty more, as we alluded to at the start of the show. I think a lot more is going to come out. It will give us plenty to talk about including information coming my way. And there's the dolls here. I've, I've, I've dog, a tiger I bought today, but I can't find it. My wife's put it somewhere. Got it for the wee grand way back in Spain. Right. So, to you viewing, I hope you've enjoyed this. Give us your comments. Yvonne's asked you, who do you think would make a good candidate? Now, when Keith Brown became deputy leader, I was still, I was still a person grata, apart from now being non grata. And I had all the deputy candidates on the show. I would like to get all the new SNP candidates on here one day for a special show. And I will invite them. Whether they accept or not, I do not know. But I will try and do it. Um, and uh, we'll get them on for you all to see. We'll see what happens. But until we see you on Sunday, please, 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 you and yours, take care. Through a Scottish prism, the programme that is unapologetically pro-Scottish independence and anti-Westminster rule. Everything we say here is viewed through a Scottish prism. Brought to you by Barhead Boy.